Hi guys, my name's Timon and basically I've received a heap of emails just asking me about guitar tone. So I thought probably the best and easiest way to talk through what I like and pedals that I use and different sounds for different songs would be to put this video together for you. So I hope it's a great help. Alright, so this is my pedal board as of the 11th of October 2010. Um, I've recently just been uh, rearranging uh, ma mainly my overdrives, just trying different things. Um, every overdrive responds differently depending on how much signal you're running into it or what pedal you're running into it um, and where it is in the chain. So, um, yeah, I just like to, you know, try out different things every now and again. Um, so, alright, so I'll just. I'll talk through my chain um, as it is now. So at the moment I'm plugging straight into my looper because um, my uh, tuner is um, making a weird noise when I plug through it. I think it's just yeah because it's so old, probably about four or five years old and um, still works but yeah. So I'm plugging straight into my looper at the moment um, and then my first overdrive is this one right here, the Cream Tone by G2D, it's a New Zealand company, um, I really like it, it's got two stages, I don't use the, the solo channel much, um, uh, just you know, okay so and then after that yeah, you can see the settings there. Um, yeah, so and after that, I go to my currently it's my tube screamer. My pedal board is such a mess. I really need to clean it up. Um, having said that, though, it's never let me down in about four, four or five years, um, except a couple of times. Been a patch lead that's just kind of you know, work yourself loose or whatever. Um, which is pretty good, I think. So yeah, that's my 808. That's the uh, second stage at the moment. Um, probably going to switch it out later and just try that. Um, it's Open Road by Visual Sound. We'll talk through kind of getting a sound from a new pedal as well. Which would be cool. Um, and then I'm going into the Love pedal. Well, it's actually the Eternity. It's an overdrive um, made by Love Pedal. Um, it doesn't have a tone, it's got a top boost, which is that top middle dial. It's got a little toggle there for different um, EQ cut and kind of see the settings there. Uh, it always kind of changes a bit though, like it's never just locked into that one thing. Okay, so after that, then I'm going into my compressor at the moment. Um, Keely compressor. Oops. Keely compressor, and um, you can see where I've changed the settings there numerous times because I thought that I was never going to change it again. But um, yeah, no, it changes. And uh, actually, that I used to run it at the start of my chain because I really like that. But what I found was that it was um, adding a bit more gain to my overdrives, which I kind of wasn't really liking. So then I've then I tried it at the end of my chain, and then. Um, yeah, so now I'm just trying it after my overdrives and before my modulation effects. Okay, and then, so then I go into my fuzz, which I don't use a whole lot, but um, I really like this fuzz. It's a Little Big Muff by Electro Harmonics. Um, yeah, like it's, yeah, I like it. Not too thin. Some fuzz can be really thin and bitey and kind of hard to make work, but that's pretty easy. Alright, this is a box of rock. This can be a pretty hard pedal to get to work, um, depending on your rig and depending obviously what sound you're going for. But, so at the moment for me, I've got it, the, t uh, the drive right down and the tone kind of just past 12 o'clock. And I just use that for like a little bit of um, sparkle and crisp, um, crispiness. A little bit of sparkle on top of the, you know, slightly overdriven sound. So you're still getting most of your tone just from your guitar and your amp, but it just drives it that little bit, so it just
kind of breaks up pretty sweet. Um, yeah, so that's after my fuzz. Like I said, it all kind of changes pretty regularly. I mean, you know, there's a general rule is that your overdrives go before your modulation effects. Um, otherwise, you know, you just gets real messy, basically. Um, so from there, then I go out to my vine pedal, old Ernie Ball Senior. I like it. Even though technically it does suck a little bit of tone when it's, yeah, it's good with passive, I guess. But I don't, you know, if you got, if you're running a looper, um, you don't really notice that much. Like, you will definitely notice tone degradation if you don't kind of run through a true bypass strip um, because your signal is going through all your pedals all the time. Uh, even when they're off, if it's not true, if it's not a true bypass pedal, your signal is still going through it, and it um, gets slightly degraded, and you lose some of the tops. So um, it's not as pure, I guess, not as true. So yeah, that's why all my pedals are plugged into that, and it also makes it easier for uh, switching effects um, mid song. You can kind of, if you got want to switch overdrives, you can just if you got one on and you want to get to the other one with one foot you can just obviously switch across which is pretty pretty handy alright so yeah so after the volume then I go back in and then I go to my reverb pedal um, I don't use much more reverb than that because otherwise it just gets real hairy I mean I only use reverb for kind of swells and stuff um, like yeah just to add a little bit more you know depth color you know all right so then um, next in line is the TC electronic uh, Nova delay um, really cool pedal got nine presets um, I think there's a new model out now but yeah that's going strong it's going well never had any problems with it um, yeah pretty technical but yeah, once you got your head around it, it works really great. Now, I mainly use that for um, songs where I don't have enough time to tap in the tempo. Good thing about having, like you really need tap tempo delay, because, um, which is, you tap in the tempo there with the FS5U, and then I'll plug into my looper, but then I've split it out the back of the looper end of those um, 2DD5s. Um, I think I've got about maybe another spare out for a tap on that at the moment on the looper. Um, yeah, because otherwise tap tempos, yeah, it's, you really need a delay of tap tempo because otherwise it just can get so messy and you get out of time and it's, um, yeah, it's not good, bad times. Alright, but we'll get to them. Um, so next in line after the TC electronic, the Nova, is the DM2. Um, so, yeah, and then that's set as it is. Yeah, so it's just a really cool old pedal. You gotta buy them second hand now, I think. Okay. So after that, then we go into this DD5, which is both DD5s have the same, pretty much the same level of feedback. Um, both set on dotted eights, triplets. So that's that one. And then this one's set slightly lower level. So you still got the same kind of feedback, but it doesn't actually go as long because the level's not as high as that one. And um, sometimes use them at, I like to use them in combination, um, pretty much only for swells, to get a real full, um, you know, woolly swell. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, and then so out of that, um, go that last loop is spare at the moment, and then I go into that. It's a talent boost made by Teletronics. A guy and one of my mates in Melbourne makes these pedals. It's a clone of the Super Hard On by Zivex. It's just I'm just saying what it's called, so I didn't name it. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, it's a cool pedal. Uh, I've got dual mono outs and it's um, it's a boost and it, it gets dirtier the more you turn that dial. 
Okay, so yeah, at the moment I've just got two one spots. It's pretty disastrous looking at the minute, but I've actually got um, a Diego power supply on its way. So that'll be great. There, these are great because they're cheap and they're and they're dual voltage, and they'll they're 1700 milliamps each from memory, um, and they've just been running on my board. One would run all that, but it's kind of makes it struggle. Like it, you know, they get tired after about 12 months, which is probably why my tuner pedal and it's making weird noises. But um, see, so yeah, I got a Diego on its way, which would be sick. That's like 3,000 milliamps, I think. I don't know. It's I'm still yet. I just know as a like yeah, a few guys that use them here and um, and they're, yeah, they're pretty sweet. Sweet. Yeah. First stage. First stage is the 808. TS-808, Second stage is the Eternity by Love Pedal. Definitely a little bit more transparent than the 808. Uh, mainly because I guess it's got like a little toggle switch, dip switch for different frequency boosts and pulls and that. Um, also, yeah, it doesn't have a tone. It's got a, a top boost, so the dial, yeah, it doesn't have a, a, a tone dial, so the top boost. And then the cream tone. Yeah, and that's the cream tone, made by GTD, New Zealand company. I like it a lot. Um, it's a bit more, maybe, grittier, bigger grit than, than both those other two pedals. Alright. Silver Face Spaceman. It's a 40 watt head. It's got two 12 Fender speakers, 1971 model. It's got two inputs, but I don't use the bass one, I guess, for obvious reasons. Um, I like to use the normal in input. 
and um, that's my EQ setting at the minute. Um, I can't take it much past four because it just breaks up, and uh, it's not what I'm going for. Um, yeah, good times. All right, so this little unit here is a module. <laughs> I never thought I'd use a module ever, but um, it's uh, called the Eleven Rack, made by Digi Design. Um, basically, it's an amp modeler. And it comes with all the classic amps, um, the Voxes, Fenders, Marshalls, etc. And the cabs, and you can choose mic, different mics and mic placements. Um, it's got other effects in it. It's got overdrives built in, modulation effects, delays, reverbs, um, graphic EQs, as you can all see there. Um, the reason, um, oh yeah, yeah, you can put your little name on it, yep good times. It's got like a hundred presets that you can program. Comes with Pro Tools. Uh, worth looking up. You can get cool um, demos online for it. Okay, so this module is very good. It's not as good as a real amp. Uh, only because it just lacks that whatever you want to call it, you know, like the X Factor. <laughs> you know, the mojo. Um, it could just be that it's not pushing any air, you know. like I mean, you can plug it into an amp and then into a speaker cab and it will run like it can you know obviously run it that way but as far as modeling goes it's just not as good as a real amp there's just nothing that I guess really compares to a real amp but this is very good having said that um, like uh, like I guess Jad and I got one um, that we use when we were away on tour and whatnot and um, basically because we needed something that um, was more reliable than a lot of the amps that we would um, be getting because um, you you know just tubes and servicing you just don't know what you're going to get and halfway through sometimes you're just down to one amp that's struggling itself so this is really good and it works in your ears like it works uh, it works in your ears it works in a mix um, like it it takes a little bit of effort but it works and you can have I said that enough yeah it works. Um, and it's great for if you got if you want no stage volume from the guitar amps. So it's um, yeah, it's really cool in that regard. This is my Fender Stratocaster. It's a 1996 model. Um, I really like it because it's it's reliable, it's versatile. Um, yeah, it's had taken a few decent hits and it's still going strong. Um, it's all standard. Um, Except the bridge, I got given this guitar, so yeah, it's been a great blessing. Um, like the only thing, yeah, that's the bridge, obviously there. It used to have a Floyd Rose. I've uh, got Graftech saddles on it now, um, which is cool. Um, Fender lace center pickups, red on the bridge, silver in the middle, and blue on the neck. Um, it's lost a few knobs and gained a few, as you can see there. Um, I wanted a black, black scratch plate but I couldn't be bothered waiting so I painted the white one which is good times um, and then it's got the roll of bearing nut there and yeah uh, these are brilliant the locking tuning heads They're, um, they work a treat Ch uh, cuts changing string time down to like I don't know half. Sweet, alright. Um, this is my Gretsch and it's home. Um, double guitar case right there. Uh, my design, thank you. It, um, purple felt, never fails. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Alright, this is my Gretsch. It's a 6120 model. Um, 1997 model. Um, it's got Filtertron pickups. Um, this is the model that I believe the Brian Setzer was based off. Um, get the Bigsby there. You know, that's obviously the dial there. The dice is inspiration of the Setzer. It's just, why wouldn't you? Um, very cool guitar. Put Spurzels on it. Wait. Put Spurzels on it. 
Um, just yeah, makes changing strings so much easier. But it's um, so I like this guitar because it's it's different, obviously, than my Strat, and um, it's just really good for a different sound, basically. All right, a program I just want to mention that has been a great help to me is um, a program called Snake Loops. And basically, uh, I paid like 20 or $30 for it, I think, from memory. Um, but it's a program that you can put any audio file or video with audio file, drop it into it, and, and you can um, slow it right down. So um, I'm just going to demonstrate real quick. It's um, This is something I just got off YouTube. Uh, there's a guy called Frank Gambali, and he's a really, like, such a good player. I like him anyway. So um, I'll just play the track. It's only, like, I don't know, 20 seconds, whatever. Um, yeah, and I'll show, like, I'll show you at full speed, and then I'll show you it like, slow down. So that's that, like, and um, <laughs> imagine trying to learn that uh, at that speed. So, um, and then you slow it down, and it's probably going to be hard to hear it, but I'll just move speed it up a bit. Um, So you can see it's um, still quite quick, but you can actually pick out the notes and um, you know work it out that way, which is priceless. What I'd like to do now is um, just quickly talk through a few thoughts that I have about you know music and guitar and being a part of a team, whether it's a you know church worship team or um, you know band doing whatever. Um, I think the first thing and the one of the most important things is to have a good attitude because you can have all the best gear and you know have all the licks and everything sussed but if you don't have the right attitude you, you know you're not going to be teachable and you're always just going to kind of be wanting to do your own thing so yeah that's not the best thing um, yeah so you know, there's that. Um, next thing I'd like to just mention is, so you don't need all the, all the, you know, hundred amps and, you know, a few amps. You don't need all the amps and all the gear. You know, like it's, you can just have what you have. Basically, if you've got a guitar and a good attitude and a tuner, because that's really important. You know, like, you know, you can, you can make progress and, um, and and you know like then the rest of the stuff will come with time and you know money you save up and you get all your stuff and that will come so but like so as far as practicalities go though like it's great if you just got a good kind of overdrive so there's kind of there's overdrives there's distortions there's fuzz pedals and um, you know they're the kind of three main ones, I guess. So, like, overdrive's good because it's a bit more of a natural, like, a warmer sound. Distortions can be a little bit more brittle and thin. Um, given the right application, they can be, yeah, epic. But as if you're going to have just one overdrive pedal, then, you know, you go for, like, you know... I mean, there's, there's heaps of great boutique pedals out there. Um, you know, Tube Screamers, TS9, 808s, 808s better than TS9s. 
the original 808 is better than the reissue 808. You know, there's full drives, full drive two, cream tones, um, OCDs, um, BB preamps are cool pedal, but that's more of a distortion, I think. Um, like, yeah, like there's just so many great pedals, but so like an overdrive, you just kind of stick to overdrives to start. That'd be probably the best thing. Um, and the delay pedals, DD5s, they're great because you can tap in the tempo. Um, very simple to use. Um, they don't make them anymore, but so you can either buy them second hand or you can get a DD7. Stay away from the DD6 because you've got to hold down the, the, the pedal to, um, you know, to get up the tap function. If you don't tap in your tempo, it just delays can get really messy and they're easily overused, so it's always better to use a little bit less than what you think you might need than have too much delay. Um, same with overdrives, um, to use a little bit less gain and to saturate the heck out of it, it's always better just to yeah, bring it back and put it on the side of caution, so to speak. Um, so yeah, DD5s. I mean, there's other great delays. Um, I've also got like, I like the Nova delay. DD20 by Boss, it's too, it's, in my opinion, it's pretty big. Like it takes up a lot of room on my board and it's got some great functions, but I mean, like I, you know, real estate on a board is, it's, it's, you know, it's a premium. So yeah, I like the Nova TC, by TC Electronic. Um, I mean, yeah, you just look at reviews and you just look at stuff, you know, like it's, there's no rules. There's no, like, you have to have this pedal and that pedal to be like the Hillsong King or, you know, like, you know, it's, you know, what you like and you got to be unique in what you do as well, if you, if you, know, if you hear what I'm saying, you know, so, um, you know, there's, um, there's lots of room for your own kind of expression, you know, depends what you want to express. So, yeah, um. That's cool. Um, what else? What else for group? Sparkle drive is another good overdrive um, by Voodoo Lab. The switches can tend to wear out pretty quickly though. I had to replace mine three times, I think. Then, um, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's life. Alright, I guess it's not one of the most prized possessions, but it's, it makes a big difference, and that is. Cabling. So good cables um, will last a lot longer than cheap ones. And so good often means more expensive. It's true. Um, I love using George L's on my pedal board because they're so small and you can you know cut them to the perfect length and that kind of thing. But I've got you got to make sure you do up the ends really tight, like really tight, so they don't come loose. Because if they come loose, then you've got all sorts of problems. Um, and then like cables that run from my guitar to my pedal board and from my pedal board to the amps. I like I like monster cables. Just because they're so they're like they're thicker and they're um they're just they're, like when people stand on them and if cable, like the packets get run over them, they're a bit more durable. Um, other good other actually great cables, I think are Megami cables. Um, Planner Ways make some good cables as well. Some of them, yeah, you know six one half a dozen the other, you know, like you just kinda you know, you work it as you go and use what you got, most important thing. My Fender is, it's a 1971 Silverface um, 40 watt head with a 212 cabinet. Um, I've had it for about six or seven years. Um, I, you know, had to do maintenance on it, change the tubes and, you know, all that affects kind of the tone. And, um, you know, but you work, you know, you work with it and you just, like I'm always rearranging my pedals on my board, like I've just, where I've got it set up at the moment, it's, that's, you know, essentially it's the same as what I have had for a while. Um, it's great to run your overdrives before your modulation effects. So, you know, like, and I like to separate my overdrives and my modulation effects using my volume pedal. So, you know, when I, you know, do a swell, um, you can back off the volume and the delays that will repeat out without the volume cutting it off. Also if you've got, if you want to hit big chord to start off with, with say, you know, two or three overdrives, you know, the volume down and you're not getting this mad hectic hum coming through. You know, like you can, you just have your volume down and then just into it. 
it's um, another little tip. Um, you know, but then again, like you don't have to do it that way. Like you can do what you want. You know, like, that's some kind of pretty good guidelines, I think. Um, all right. So now I'm going to switch out my tube screamer for this pedal by Visual Sound, the Open Road. Um, I, I I've used it before, but um, I just thought like I haven't used it in a while, and I'm gonna you know sometimes when you get a pedal you mightn't like it at first as much as what you had on there. Um, but it's always good to keep, you know, retry stuff or, you know, you get, just keep working it out, you know. So I'm going to chuck some aboard real quick and, um, and then I'm just going to get cracking. So when you're trying out a new pedal, um, it's really good to use a guitar that you're very familiar with um, and the amp, so like, kind of you know what you should be hearing and then you can kind of adjust the pedal accordingly. Um, I like to use my Strat, I mean I could use my Gretsch but it's, I like my Strat because I just kind of know what to listen for. Um, so I kind of set my sound for that and then most of the time actually it's, it works out perfect for my Gretsch which is not always the case uh, depending on what guitar you use, you know, like it's, it's just kind of cool that it works like it does for those two. Um, I'll, I'll play, you'll notice like I'll play again like a kind of sequence of um, notes, chords, runs or whatever. Um, um, and so, but the idea is just to kind of, yeah, just try to, it, a lot of it comes with experience, you know, like, so basically you just need to start out with a good sound with just your guitar and your amp. Um, and so,
Lord. Sometimes some pedals aren't just cut out for um, certain sounds or other, other pedals are more versatile, other pedals are um, you know, more better suited to a specific sound, if that makes sense. So yeah, so this is essentially my first stage that I'm replacing. This is my lowest gain pedal. Um, so I mean that's what I, the sound I should be aiming for I guess. happened there is that once I've turned down the drive it's dropped dramatically in volume. Um, so that's on. Off. So like I need to boost up that volume again. And that's sounding too dark now with the with the gain right down. It's just sounding dark, so I'm going to bring the tone back up. So that's sounding better. I'm just going to put a little bit more gain on it. to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, otherwise, all the best.